Welcome! In this tutorial we will back up our site. And that means that we will back up all of the pages and all of the content in the site. Um, let's have a look at the site. So we'll use the package db backup. I'll come back to that later. But let's have first have a look at the site. As you can see there is quite a bit of content already. Uh, and obviously we want to save all of the images and all of the content on the different pages in our database uh, and back it up safely so that we can reuse it um, whenever there is something going wrong. So we'll use the package db backup for that and um, in order to make that work we have to install it. So let's go to our virtual environment. And install the package. Great, and let's put it in our requirements. And in our settings, let's see how we should do that. Uh, in our settings, we should include the app. So our settings are here. Base.py, and we should insert it there. And we should have some specific settings here. The first one is the file system that Django is using, which is a pretty standard um, line. So let's start with that one. And here it is, db backup storage, and then the file system storage from Django that is being used. The second one is um, maybe a bit more peculiar because it specifies the location where the backup files are going to be. So the destination for backing up and obviously the source for restoring the content of the pages. And what we will do is we will put that in a directory called backups at the same level as our project directory. So not within our project directory, but um, at the same level uh, in the parent directory of that. And we will achieve that by setting it to the location, setting it to your uh, OS path join base there and then going up one directory and then creating this directory backups. So that's all for our settings. What we'll do now is that we'll push these uh, changes to our um, repository. So let's first add it. Git commit backup edit and then push git push and now they're added to our repository now let's go to our server we'll use the username user pet as we are accustomed to by now and we can directly go to our server uh, let's look at the files that at the directories that we have here there is our virtual environment and our project directory and here we will create this directory backups where we will put the direct where we will put the backups let's activate our virtual environment go into our project and pull the changes from our repository and then you can see that we have these two changes that we just uh, applied in our development uh, um, environment. We have them here in our production environment as well. So now we can proceed with installing the DB Backup package. Um, well, just to make sure that everything that uh, uh, needs to be installed is installed, we just install requirements.txt because everything is in there. So pip3 install our requirements.txt There are some wheels which are not installed but we've seen in previous tutorial that is not very important. Uh, what is important that is it has installed successfully installed Django DB backup and that's what we wanted obviously. Now backing up should be as easy as just running the command DB backup. And we also want to back up our media files. And we can do that, by the way, I'll show you that, how that is done here in the documentation. Here we have the commands, db backup, db restore, we'll use that in a minute, and then media backup to backup all the media files, and obviously media restore as well. So let's run media backup.
And let's have a look at the directory to see um, whether the files are there. And there they are. APSQL file which holds all the entries in the database and then this file will hold all the media files. Now what we're going to do is to recreate our site uh, on our development computer in a separate directory, just recreate it, recreate it from scratch. Uh, and for that we have to create a new database as well. Um, one thing we need to make sure of is that we use the same version of PostgreSQL. So let's check which version that we have here. And we can check the version by using select version. And you see that we have version 12. So that's the version that we should have on our development computer as well. Let's exit this and log out of our, well, first uh, deactivate our virtual environment and then log out of our server. We still are in the virtual environment of our development computer. So now we can go to the PostgreSQL database and check what version that we have here. And we have version 12 as well, so that should be okay. We shouldn't have any problems um, importing the data from the Postgres database uh, of our production server. Well, I actually could have stayed uh, at the prompt. Let's return to the Postgres prompt because we need to create our backup database here. Let's do that with create database and then the name of the database, dbpet backup. Uh, and the owner is going to be user pet, which already exists uh, because we use that for our development um, site. Database is created. Now we can quit. And um, here we can create a backup. Let's do that on one level higher because now we can deactivate this environment. And um, at this level, we can create a new directory. Um, let's call it pet backup. Here we can also create a directory backups, which will hold all our backup files. Let's go into that. Oh no, that's obviously not right because I have to create that within the directory. So let's remove that again and do it right. CD pet backup and then create this new directory backups. Go into that. And now we can copy the contents of the backup um, backups directory of our server to this directory. And we can use the SCP command for that. So SCP and then the source at our site, which is at 165.22.119.4. And then our home directory user pet. So this is the home directory where all of our files are. And then we need to go to backups. And then we need all files. Um, well, now we need a an escape character because we want to have all the files. And um, because we are using uh, ZSH, we need to have this escape directory. But we can copy the files one by one if we want as well. These are the right source files. And we need to copy them to our current directory. So we'll put a dot there and do that. It has copied out for the files. Let's check. Yes, they are there. So let's go up one directory again and start by recreating a new environment. Let's start with a, a virtual environment. And activate that one. And now we can clone our repository. Git. You can copy the link from GitHub as well if you want, obviously. Let's check what we have here. Uh, it seems that everything is okay. Let's enter our directory. Let's have a look again. Yeah, everything is there. And now we can install all of our um, requirements. So let's do that.
and it seems that everything is uh, installed. Now, as you remember, we have some settings that are in a file that is not tracked by GitHub. Um, let's go into our uh, settings directory and let's have a look. Here we have base.py, development.py, production.py, but on the server and as well as in our uh, also on our development computer, we have this local.py file, which contains the local, which contains the secret settings like a secret key and passwords and stuff like that, uh, and that is intentionally not tracked on GitHub. So we need to uh, copy that over. Let's copy it over from the server. Pet, pet settings local.py that you do it and then to our current directory yeah that's okay now we have to edit that um, uh, because we need to put in the name of the backup database so the name that is in there now is obviously the name of our production database and we need to change it into db pet backup which is the name of the database that we just created um, I'll cut this piece out of the uh, video because it contains all the sensitive settings, but uh, that is the thing that you need to do. So now that is done, we can migrate the database to have all our applications available. Oh, obviously, we have to go back to our project directory, which should be two levels up, I think. Yeah. Well, everything is okay, and now we can restore db restore. Yes, we want to continue. And we can run media restore as well. Yes. And now everything should be in order, so let's check and just run the server. Let's open a new window on our browser and see if we can view our site. Yeah, everything is there. As you can see, we have all our articles and everything seems to be working quite okay. That completes the restore um, and the video as well. I uh, hope to see you next time. Bye.